we know that nuclear weapons can instantly kill tens of millions of people. But what if instead of the blast happening on the ground, it happened at a higher altitude or in space? A blast like that could take down the entire electric grid and destroy all electronic devices. From financial to communication networks to train networks, they would all come to an end. From sewage treatment plants to water treatment plants, the electric pumps running them, well, you guessed it, they run on electricity. Meaning, therefore, the entire water supply would be cut off, a country could be in real trouble. Now, military experts have been warning that countries that possess nuclear weapons could use this as a first strike option. In 1962, US conducted a 1.45 megaton thermonuclear weapon called Starfish Prime on top of Johnston Island. And over 1,600 kilometers away, in nighttime Hawaii, the skies were bright, the radios fell silent, and they became noisy, and the street lights went out. Basically, a lot of the electric infrastructure was affected even that far away. Radiation from this test also damaged satellites in the low Earth orbit. These impacts were the result of electromagnetic pulses interacting with the atmosphere, the geomagnetic fields, and the Earth's structure. This is what is known as a High Altitude Electromagnetic Pulse, or EMP for short. Its effect on the electric grid is strongly determined by the Earth's electrical conductivity near the area of the impact, the grid-specific parameters, the magnetic properties of the EMP pulse. So to understand how this could affect the grid, one key measurement is to map out the surface impedance of the Earth everywhere that the grid goes. That includes measuring local variations in the magnetic field and by using voltmeters to measure time-varying electric fields at those locations. Now this EMP from the nuclear blast, it consists of three types of pulses known as E1, E2 and E3. E1 is the high frequency pulse that affects consumer electronics and consumer products the most and therefore gets the most attention in the media but it only lasts about one microsecond. It is the result of X-rays and gamma rays interacting with the atmosphere between altitudes of 30 and 100 kilometers. Electric currents introduced in this layer broadcast a secondary pulse of electromagnetic radiation that can then make its way to the Earth's surface and affect electric power, the infrastructure, and possibly damage it. Even if this radiation doesn't affect the electric grid in itself, it can prepare the grid in a state where it can be affected even more by later electromagnetic pulses. Now E2, it's not all that bad because this is kind of like lightning. Uh, lightning storms happen all the time. Our grid is a lot more resilient to this type of electromagnetic pulse and there are a lot of protections already built in. So this is the part that we have to worry about the least. And now it's time to talk about E3. This is the late time EMP or also known as the magnetohydrodynamic EMP and it can last anywhere from one second to hundreds of seconds at the time and this is the one that can cause the most damage to our grid. Now E3 geomagnetic disturbance can induce electric fields in the conductive part of the Earth's surface near the grid which can then induce electric currents through the grounded grid and that can cause a large power surge and a large amount of current to flow through and then damage all the protective equipment that is in the grid and the high voltage transformers. Now what happens when a nuclear weapon explodes in space is that it pushes a current of ions and electrons through the atmosphere which induces a magnetic field which in turn induces electric currents and electric fields to flow through the conductive ground and through the grounded electric grid. Now regions of high conductivity can carry this current a lot better than regions of low conductivity. Now this is why we need to understand surface impedance because it is linked between geomagnetic and geoelectric field variation and is highly dependent on the subsurface rock structure. Regions with electrically conductive sedimentary rocks have higher conductivity, whereas regions with igneous and metamorphic rocks have electrically resistive properties and do not carry the current as well and have low conductivity. Therefore, the larger electric fields induced by the nuclear explosion in areas of high conductivity and in areas with high capacity power lines can then induce such a big surge that it can destroy the entire grid. Now the main problem is that we don't really know how and where nuclear explosion could happen 
but secondly we also don't know what effect it would have on the grid at that place because nobody has ever come together from multiple disciplines to work on this problem therefore researchers have been calling on experts from nuclear weapons, geologists, electrical engineers to come together, collaborate and try and understand this problem specifically because it is one of the greatest risks that any country has at this moment in time due to the fact that such a explosion, while it wouldn't cause massive casualties so politically could be considered you know, not that bad, would in turn have secondary effects which would then eventually cripple an entire country.